Dear students, I am back again, Dr. V. Pankajavalli, to discuss with you and share my knowledge which I have gained in the pharmacology of anesthesia. Today, we will discuss about the intravenous anesthetic agents. So, as the, our general format, we will start with a brief history of the drugs all drugs which we are going to study, then we will see the features of the IV intravenous anesthetic agents which are commonly used in our day to day practice. And the conclusion will be, I will give you some references and we can have a feedback. The assignments though it is an online class, you still can reach out to me through my mail id so that if you have any queries, I will be only too happy to clear them all. So, when we talk about pharmacology in anesthesia, as you all know, we have studied about the basic hemodynamic pharmacological oriented physiology of our systems, how what happens to your drug, what happens to the system and everything in our previous sessions. Today, I would like to introduce you to the drugs which we commonly use in anesthesia like as you all can see there are the dexmedetomidine, this is the latest drug they have got now in use. If we go from below, thiopental is time tested that was the first intravenous anesthetic agent used for induction. Then now we all of you are being used to propofol and these two are the basic intravenous anesthetic agents. In today's lecture, we will have a discussion in in-depth discussion of the pharmacological, the pharmacokinetics, the pharmacodynamics, the indications, the clinical uses, the contraindications, the side effects of these two drugs today. Of course, we do have some opiates, we also have a benzodiazepine group of drugs like midazolam and then we also have flumazenil, then we have uh, methohexol again a barbiturate, but we do not use it commonly. Today we will also touch upon methohexitol which is one of the barbiturates and also about propofol which is and also about fox propofol though not commonly used it is a pro drug of propofol. We will just touch upon those two drugs methohexitol and fox propofol so that we can have a completion about barbiturates and propofol groups. The other drugs we will be taking it up in a later uh, presentation. So, when you know about the brief history of uh, intravenous anesthesia, in 1656 Percival Christopher Wren and Daniel Johann Major, these two men used a small quill and a bladder into a dog's vein to inject vein into the dog. But then they also demonstrated that once you give the drug uh, into the vein into the vein, the dogs became boost. So, what happened that the work was going on just within 10 years in 1665, the German naturalist and physician Sigismund L. Scholz, he was the first who attempted at IV anesthesia in human beings and then subsequently it took so many years almost you can see it is about 250 years elapsed before Fedorov who could give anesthesia first IV anesthesia in humans using opiate group of drugs. This is for history but in modern anesthesia the breakthrough came only after Lundy, Waters and Lundy, they found out the moiety of thiopentol, pentothal sodium as we commonly call it as the thiobarbiturate in 1934. Then they said how all it could be used for induction, what all can we give those drugs in an infusion for maintenance or along with the inhalation agents to maintain a minimum alveolar concentration of the inhalation, can we use thiopentol so that the inhalation agent can be reduced. They also used for pseudoanalgesia where they wanted in the ICU or sometimes in electroconvulsive therapy, shock therapy and all that. They do not really do a surgery, 
So the sedo analgesia was outside the operating room. They were trying whether they could use in pediatric patients who come who are to be quietened for any radiological investigations where they can be given a sedo analgesia, or also in pediatric, especially when they do a caudal analgesia and all that, and they use a uh, drugs for um, uh, spinal or caudal epidural. They wanted to sedate those children because they will not be scared about the operation room. So then comes the major breakthrough of ICU sedation. So many pa uh, patients are now on ventilators for days, weeks, months and years. So they wanted to do this, have a safe drug which can be used at the bedside. They do not do a surgery but they may need sometimes and they also require sedation for do some bedside procedures for these patients like commonly we all know about a tracheostomy or an intracath or a bedside uh, spinal tap or whatever. So they are using it for ICU sedation either for a short duration or a longer duration also. How was it all possible? Only thiopentol uh, discovery you think all would have been made possible? No, certainly not at all. The modern IV anesthesia improved and walked its milestones mainly because we have also developed parallelly using target controlled infusions. As you all remember, we want to maintain a serum level. In the last class we discussed about the pharmacokinetics. We were discussing about how the drugs can be given in micro doses in mu gram nanogram doses so that the patient's controlled anesthesia systems the target control the desired high blood pressure the desired heart rate the desired spontaneous ventilation and the desired amount of hypnosis or sedation of the central nervous system so we all also have monitoring devices cns monitoring devices like the bis so this all the equipments the uh, both for monitoring as well as for infusing them in infusion a controlled timed out drugs patient control systems all this also parallelly grew up along with the invention and discovery of the barbiturates and the other drugs for anesthesia that is a real breakthrough for modern IV anesthesia. So as students today what you learn will go a long way for you to develop newer drugs and uh, to have give safe anesthesia and analgesia in all your patients when you blossom out to be great anesthesiologists.